Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Today, it's a dose of impatience in my art journal. I did not feel like waiting for anything to dry. Okay, I rarely ever feel like waiting for anything to dry. Perhaps you feel that way when you create too? Well, here's the thing about the impatience. Back before I had gray hair, I used to think impatience was a bad thing, that I should somehow learn to be patient, that it was better to be patient. But guess what? In this art journal page, it was better to be impatient because the fact that I didn't want to wait for something to dry let me create a background that was easy and that I loved and was far better than what I had planned or what I had in my mind that I was trying to do if I had been able to blot it up the way I'd hoped if I could have found a paper towel anywhere, anywhere in the studio. I'll also be sharing with you how I've started cleaning out my spray bottles. They're the nozzles for them. It's so easy and it's kind of one of those hit myself in the head and go, duh, why haven't I been doing this sooner to help keep those nozzles nice and clear? Sometimes the best things happen when I'm not even looking. This background built up and I fell in love with it when I was cleaning off my brayer while making some gel prints. Now it's still even a little bit wet there because I'm too impatient to wait for it to dry. Because I saw this stencil, Mod Circles and Ovals by Lizzie Main for Stencil Girl, and I realized I so wanted to put that on that page. So why wait for something to dry when the muse is saying, play, play, play. Now this bottle of art spray is just about at the end. I managed to squeeze out enough here for the page and actually squeezed out even more than maybe I really wanted to. Not because of how much it put on the page. I loved it when I lifted up the stencil and some of it kind of ran underneath and gave me such a loose mixed media kind of vibe to it. And I love how much spray ink is still on the stencil because I can just flip it over and add another layer of color right there onto the paper on my counter because I'll end up using that in something eventually. So none of it gets wasted. But the problem that I have with what's in the journal is it's gonna take it longer to dry. And I really want it to be dry to go on to the next thing. Because you see, I don't have a single paper towel around. That's a baby wipe I've got in my hand. I don't have any Kleenex or tissues, paper towels. I am completely out of anything that would do that job. So I'm kind of stuck looking at this going, I really, really wish <laughs> this was dry. And yeah, I know I could get the heat gun out, but I really hate getting heat guns out. So while I'm waiting for it to dry, I'm going to show you how you can clean your spray caps so that they don't ever clog for you. First thing I'm going to do is find some place I can spray on. So I'm just going to open up a journal page. I'm going to turn my spray bottle upside down and anything that's left in there, I'm going to pump it until there's nothing left. There really wasn't much in there. I'm going to take the cap off and I'm going to put it on a bottle of water. So this was a spray bottle that I had. I'd used up all that color and I realized that would make a great thing to just fill with water to run through just the cap because that's where things might clog up. So this way, all of the spray ink is out of there. It's not going to clog on me. I do something similar to this when I'm doing aerosol spray painting and I clean the caps out thoroughly. And I realized I'll bet that would really help my spray bottles too. You can probably tell that that page is still mighty juicy. It's not dry and it's not going to be dry for what feels like forever to me. So I could get out a heat gun, except mm, I don't really like doing that. So my other option is to use whatever I have within arm's reach. I don't have a paper towel, so that's off the table. Can't use that. So what do I have? I have some baby wipes. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the stencil back down over it. And then I'm going to use that baby wipe to at least get some of that ink off so that it'll dry a little bit faster. And yeah, I need to get paper towels on the grocery list too. So I went after the wettest looking parts of the page to just pull up some of the ink. I didn't want to pull all of it up. I didn't want to lose all of that wonderful color, but some of it I'm willing to get rid of just so it dries a little bit faster. And when I lifted it up, yep, a piece of it started to rip. And guess what? I'm going to call that an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. Now here's the thing, it's still there, so if I can get it just glued down, it's going to be great. It'll be barely noticeable. But there's a little principle here called wet things don't really glue down very well. So since everything's still wet, it's not going to stick terribly well to the glue, but it will stick amazingly well to my fingers. <laughs> 
It feels like I'm doing a little bit of surgery here to this page, and by the way this is going, you can tell you never want me to be your surgeon. Of course, if I'd waited until everything dried, it probably would have gone a little bit easier. But again, it's that impatience thing in me, so I'm going to find a way to get this to work well enough right now. Not having the exact supply that I wanted to use, the paper towel, wasn't oops. It was an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. Because see, if I hadn't used the baby wipe, I wouldn't have gotten this look, and I'm really happy with how that's looking so far. Well, let's bring in a fun image to put on here. Now, these are images from Id Kapili. Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. She sells digital images, and I printed it out on a piece of craft attitude. This is basically my easy cheat way of doing an image transfer kind of a thing without all of the stressful hard work. Now, as I'm cutting this out, you'll notice I'm not cutting very carefully to the edge. I'm just kind of getting near it. This was not precision or fussy cutting at all. And where I want to place it on the page, that feels dry enough, so I'm going to go for it. What I want to do first is just peel up just a little bit of it. This is basically a clear film that's on a backing paper that you run through an inkjet printer. I'm just going to get it started before I add the glue. That'll make it easier once I've got the glue on there. You can use gel medium, you can use glue stick, whatever kind of glue you've got. For me, when I'm doing this, I prefer using the glue stick, so I'm just going to put a whole bunch of it on there. I'm going to be generous. This is not the time to be chintzy with the glue, and be sure that you're getting the glue where you also are using your finger to hold it down, so just make sure you get all parts of it with some glue on it. I found Craft Attitude to be extremely forgiving, so I can either peel it off of the backing paper now and get it positioned on there, which is my favorite at the moment because it's the one that goes fastest, or you can put it down there with the backing paper on it, give it time to dry, and then lift off the backing paper. But of course, I've gone for the impatient option today just to get it on there because I'm ready to put another layer on it. How do I decide what to do on a layer or what to do next when I'm making an art journal page? Well, there are three questions that I tend to ask myself and those three questions drive the decisions that I make. They guide me so that I actually never get stuck because one of those three questions will always get me moving and know which direction to go. I go into depth with those three questions as I'm building a bunch of different art journal pages so you can see it in action, so you can see the process that goes into making those decisions, and it's really the fundamentals. Once you understand those three things, that allows you to know what to do on your page with the supplies that you have on hand. The workshop's called Art Journaling Fundamentals, and all the details are over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com, and maybe the link will pop up on screen, and if not, it's down below in the description. I'm using all sorts of pens and ways to write on top of this just to get my thoughts on here. What I'm writing, they're actually real words, but don't worry if you can't read them, because I can't read them either. It's scribble journaling. For me, it's about getting those feelings and thoughts right there onto the page. And by doing scribble journaling, I don't have to worry about my handwriting. I don't have to worry about punctuation, spelling, none of that stuff. It's really just about getting those feelings out onto the page. Are you wondering why I'm doing my journaling where I am? Why I'm not journaling across the middle because I had that urge? Well, the reason is, is because that area is still damp. It's not dry enough for me to take a pen over it without either ruining the pen or if I'm using a fountain pen like what I'm doing here, it would actually rip through the page. So now you know why I'm hanging around the edges or the places where the paint is dry. If you'd like to know the exact supplies that I've been using here, I've got links to everything, full supply list, over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. And yep, there's a link down below for that too. Well, thanks so much for joining me for today's play. If you've been enjoying this video, and if you're still here, I'm guessing that you have, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you hit that subscribe button, you'll know as soon as I have a new video out and won't miss a thing. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey. 